Hello, everybody. My name is Nadine Vodder, and I am a customer success manager over here at FreightWave. Um, this is a Sonar 101 video where I'm going to be showing you how to navigate Sonar on a high level. I'm not going to go into the definition of any indices in particular. I'm just going to show you a very high level of how to navigate Sonar. So let's go ahead and get started. When you first log into Sonar, you will be landing on this dashboard page up here in the top right corner. These pages are updated internally by FreightWaves employees, so you guys will not be able to edit these. So I'm going to walk you through how to build your own page, how to add a chart, how to add a map, all of the five or the four widgets that we have. Um, and hopefully we'll answer any questions that you might have that are outstanding. So the first step when you log in is to make sure that you're using your pages. So when you are a very first Sonar user right here on the bottom left, you will see my pages and that is going to be completely blank. I have pages that are already built, but I've minus mine out to show you what yours will look like. So to add a page, you will go under edit pages to the bottom left corner. You will see an add page pop up and you will click that and you can name it whatever you want to name it. I'll just name this one Sonar 101 and then I'll click enter. So the purpose of working under my pages is to make sure that all of your information is saved from the previous day. So if you logged out right now and logged right back in, the same chart, map, whatever you have pulled up will still be there. Um, this is a, a good function for anybody that doesn't want to rebuild a watch list or anything like that. Um, it's just automatically saved. You don't have to click uh, you know, a save button or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is how to add a chart. So you'll see in the top right corner this blue plus sign. When you click on that, you'll see the four widget options. We have a news feed, a chart, a, we have six watch list options, and then a map. The charting is what I'm going to show you, so I'm going to click on chart. When you click on that, it will automatically pull up a blank chart since you have not searched anything yet. Um, the way that you can search is up here in the enter symbol. You can either start typing and it will start populating some options for you. You can also search through our index categories. Um, if you're looking for something in particular, you can click on the plus sign next to any of the index categories and see you know, a couple of other drop downs. Click on another plus sign and then it will give you the breakdown of all of the um, ways that you can view that particular index. So I just clicked on the outbound tender reject index and we have about, um, it looks like nine ways for you to view that specific index. And again, click on the plus sign and that's the breakout for all of the X markets that we have for the outbound tender reject index. So that is one way to search it, or you can type, like I said, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in otri.usa. And then I'm gonna change my time series at the very bottom. You'll see a one Y, that stands for one year. You can also do year to date, which we'll do from January 1st of 2019. You can do a six month view. Whichever view you want to do it in um, is up to you. I always like to look at one year, just makes more sense in my head. And um, so that's how you can change the time series. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how you can change your, um, your uh, map or I guess your chart style. If you go right here to display type, you will see under chart style, there are um, a couple of different options on the way that you can view. So if you click on a line, that will just pull up a white line. You can also put it on a baseline view, which will set a baseline, which you can actually grab and move if you wanna have it set at 10 or whatever it is you wanna have it set at. Of course, it will show anything that is above that line or anything that is below that line in red and green. Um, so the most used uh, one would be mountain, just because it makes the most sense. You can also change the color of your mountain if that is something that you wanna do by going to the very bottom and you'll see new theme, click mountain color and you can change the mountain color to whatever you wanna do. So if your company has a specific color that you guys like to use, it's a holiday, you know, green and, and uh, all that for St. Patrick's Day, whichever you wanna do, you can do it that way. Then just click save. And tomorrow when you log in, again, this will be saved. The chart style, the map or the color of the chart everything like that will be saved. Um, let's see, the next thing we're gonna do is show um, a couple of the different studies as well as the um, edit tools. So I'll show you first a couple of the tools that we have within Sonar that you might wanna use 
um, when talking to customers or whatever you might want to use it for. We have a call out that a lot of people use to pick, pinpoint a specific date on the, the chart to call out when maybe um, a holiday started, when the ELD mandate went into effect, when your new RFP went into effect, um, whatever it is you want to do. You click on that call out, you click on the specific date, and then you can drag it out and you can type, um, you know, whatever you want to type. Um, and that is um, how you do that. So you can click as many of them as you want, you just click once, and then you move your mouse and you can name it, um, you know, whatever it is you want to name it. So I'm just going to put hey because I don't know what date that is. And then if you accidentally misspelled something or you put it on the wrong date, if you hover over, you'll see that it says right click to delete and you can right click on those and they will delete off. That is um, the call outs. You can also draw trend lines if you want to see the time, um, a trend line between two different time series to see whether it's increased or decreased and it will show you the percentage. So if I click from 12-26-2018 to let's do January 17th, looks like it's almost the lowest dip. I can click right there one other time and it will draw my trend line for me. Um, to give you a definition of just what's in that box, the negative 8.06 is going to be the actual value change between those two dates. Um, the in parentheses negative 49.55 is the percent change over those um, dates and then the 22 bars is just 22 days since this is a daily um, index. If this is a monthly index, that would be 22 months, which really you wouldn't be looking at, but it's whatever the time series is during that time period. So if it's a monthly number, that bars will indicate how many months have elapsed since the trend line was drawn. And again, you can hover over and right click off of that. And those will go away. Oops. So that is a couple of the draw tools. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you for the chart is how to draw a moving average. Um, a lot of our, some of our charts are daily numbers as well and um, have a, a fluctuation with weekends if you're looking at hours of service in particular. Um, so you can draw a moving average and select your time period. So looking at the period is either uh, seven days, 14 days, whichever you wanna choose. I'm gonna do 14 days and then I'm just gonna click done and it will draw a moving average for a 14 day time period. Um, and again, you can hover over, right click, and you can either edit or delete it. So I'm gonna delete it. So that is it for the charts. Now I'm going to go into the map. So I'm just gonna exit out of that chart at the top right corner, go back into the plus sign, click on map, and it will pop up a blank map. <clears throat> now you can see the um, market breakouts on the map. There are no indices, no uh, weather overlays. Nothing is added on the map when you first click it. To add um, an indice or weather, you click over here um, in the top left corner of the map and you'll see this little raindrop. And underneath that is where you can change either your granularity level. If you wanted to look at something on a state, um, state basis, you can do that. Regions, we have um, regions and pad markets, Canadian markets, and U.S. markets, which are the 135 that you guys normally will look at. Um, and to turn on the indices, you'll go under Chlora Plus settings. You'll turn that on. And then you'll be able to select a particular index that you want to look at. So I'll just look at the detention minutes. And I'm going to turn the legend on. And I'm going to minus this out by clicking this blue arrow so I can see this part of the, the map. So the legend is at the bottom and you can kind of figure out what colors are um, falling within those um, numbers. So this is detention minutes, so it's the amount of time a driver is sitting at a dock at either a shipper or receiver. So um, you can see that broken out by the specific markets. And this is a heat map. So the way that you read a heat map um, within Sonar is no matter what you're looking at, if it is a darker blue, that is going to indicate a higher number. If it is a whiter area or a lighter blue, that is going to indicate a lower number. If you're looking at an index that has a negative option, then those uh, markets will be red. And of course, the deeper the red, the higher the negative, the lighter the red, the lower the negative, um, which is on, I'll just look at the head hall index to kind of show you what that means. 
So you can see on the, on the map which markets have a negative head haul index and which markets have a positive head haul and which ones are kind of neutral in the middle and don't really have a large swing. So that's how you can change the um, index category. You can also overlay um, a couple of different weather options. So if you want to overlay the precipitation layer, um, you can turn that on and you can also turn on the legend if you want to see what the colors indicate. And then you can also play that out um, in the future if you click on the little play button at the top. That will um, overlay kind of a radar, of course, that everybody's used to looking at a radar. That's what you're going to be seeing when you're looking at the precipitation layer. If I turn that off, I can now add the road conditions. So the road conditions are going to show you, I'll turn, turn the legend on, going to show you whether the roads are dry, wet, light frost, slush, snow, ice, or if there's a possible closure. This isn't going to show you traffic or anything like that. Um, so it's good to see uh, which, what road conditions might be affecting your driver during the transit time. Of course, even you can look at it for yourself if you're interested. And the more you zoom in, the more um, granular you can get with the roads. More will populate the more you zoom in. And you can also play this one out in the top right corner 48 hours in the future. So you can see how those road conditions will be changing according to the weather. Of course, it's going to follow what the radar is doing. Um, but road conditions on a granular level, the more you zoom, the more you can see. And I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to show you um, the road cameras and how to turn those on. We have 20,000 road cameras within Sonar that you can look at. And um, as you zoom in, the more will populate. So, okay, there we go. Um, so if you click on a specific road camera, it will give you a snapshot of what's happening in that, at that particular time. We update them internally every 15 minutes. So these are government DOT cameras. So if DOT camera is updated, then the snapshot will change. If it's not updated, it will remain the same. Um, and of course, like I said, as the road conditions, you can zoom in. I'll just go to Atlanta because that has a lot of them. You zoom in. And then if you click redo camera search, you will be able to populate more cameras, click on those, and more um, images will pop up that will be affecting your, your day. So I'm going to I turn those off. And the last thing I'm going to show you on the map is the location forecast. So I'm going to turn that on right here and um, click in the Atlanta market. And if you see this little yellow pin drop, um, let me click right here under location forecast, you can see the longitude and latitude for where that yellow pin drop is. So as I move it around the Atlanta market, the weather might be changing. Of course, I'm sure you've lived in a city where you or on the phone with somebody and they live across town and it's pouring down rain, but your house is sunny. That's the same exact reason why we have the, um, the location forecast change for your particular um, longitude and latitude. So you can um, make that box bigger by clicking on this uh, little circle and that will pop it up a little bit larger so you're able to see more um, data and that's gonna go out 48 hours in advance as well. It will show you the road conditions, the road temperature automatically, and you can also overlay ice, snow, hourly rain, you know, however, whatever information you want to put on there. So wind speed, if you click on that, it will populate it right here. So clicking on these three dots is where you can add more information, depending on what you're wanting to look at. And again, you can turn those off if you click one that you don't want to look at. You can just unclick it and it will go away. And you can also click on freight data, and this is going to be in particular to that specific market. So this is not going to be anything to have to do with the longitude and latitude. This is just for the specific Atlanta market. And you can scroll through and see all of the available indices that we have for that specific market. And you can also click to chart right here, and it will um, bring up a chart for you to be able to see how that is trended over time, whether it's increasing or decreasing, because it's just going to give you the value here. You can see how it's trended if you click on the chart. And then you can just exit out of that. So that is it for the maps. Now I'm going to exit out of the map, and I'm going to show you the um, watch list options. 
So we have six different watch list options. The most popular is going to be the tree map. The tree map is um, going to show you all of the indices in a box format. So I will pull up um, under load from existing symbol list. We have default symbol lists that we have built internally for the tender rejections. If you click on default symbol list, you'll see this pop up of all of the ones that we have built out um, for you to use without having to search them for you. So um, if you're looking at this, the OTRI dash market outbound lanes dash Los Angeles will pull up the available lanes for the Los Angeles market that have been rejected. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click use symbol list because that will just append our um, default symbol list. You don't have to worry about that and then click submit and you'll see them um, in this gray box. If this gray box is not full or does not have anything in it, then you didn't click something correctly or um, there was a there was a problem. So just go back in and do that again. And then you'll just click save and that will pop up a tree map. The way to read a tree map is the top left corner is going to be the um, the rejection with the highest value or whichever whatever you have pulled up, but it's going to have the largest value at the top right corner, or sorry, top left corner, and then bottom right corner will be the smallest value. So if I hover over the San Antonio market, um, you can see that the value is 1.49 and the percent change is 4.30. So the percent change is going to be the change day over day, and the value is going to be the actual value for the amount of rejections for Los Angeles to San Antonio, so about one and a half percent and the color of the box is going to indicate the percent change. So if it's a negative number like Los Angeles to Gary, that's why the box is red. If it's a positive number, that's why the box is green. And the, the larger the box, of course, the larger the value. <clears throat> so I'm gonna exit out of this one and I'm gonna show you one other way to build a um, watch list. So I'm gonna build a heat map list. I'm going to show you how to manually build one for something that you might be interested in particularly. If you click right under symbol search, you can manually type if you would like to and do otri.atlanta if that's what you want to look at. You click on that and then you'll click add and that will make sure that it populates up here. If you do not click add, nothing will populate up here. You can also search through the index categories just like you did on the chart by clicking the plus sign. Um, if we wanted to do the uh, tender lead time for a specific um, watch list, you could do that. And then you can click add all for the X markets right here. And that will populate all 135 X markets um, tender lead time. And then just click save. And that is how you can build a um, standard heat map watch list. So the colors on this is just like the tree map. It's going to indicate what the percent change is. So this one is at a positive 11%, so that's why it's green. This one is at a negative 1%, and that's why it's red. If it's kind of a purpley color or a you know, fuchsia, whatever you want to call that, um, it's just not as big of a change, or it could be no change, depending on what you're looking at. You can also sort these by the largest value, largest percent change, and um, actual change. If you're looking at this, it's the actual change day over day. Or you can do it by the name of the market. Whichever way you want to do it, um, you can sort it out and also click on this little three bars, which will bring up a chart. So that is the watch list. You can also edit them by clicking on the pencil right here, and you can edit them without having to exit out and start over. The last thing I'm going to show you is the news. We have two different news options. You can look at the RSS news feed, which you can choose your specific topics that you want to look at. So if I click on transportation news and click save, it will pop it up um, kind of as a looks social media-ish and you can see the photos in the article. You can also click on the article and it will take you to that specific website um, if that's the way that you want to look at that. Um, a lot of people use this without having to you know, look outside of Sonar, you can just go to your news feed and, and click on that. That one is updated, um, I believe, throughout the day. So I'm gonna exit out of this and show you the last one, which is the social media flash content. So this is going to be pulling um, anything from social media that has a relevant um, topic to transportation. There's a bunch of different categories that we have chosen. Um, it pulls from Twitter, it pulls from any social media, 
that you can think of. And if you wanted to search a particular, so if there was a hurricane coming, you could search that particular hurricane and it would pull up all of the specific um, articles based on that hurricane if you put, you know, Hurricane Harvey or whatever it is that's coming up. Um, so you can see, you know, five months after Michael, the demolition and all of that in Mexico Beach. And you can also click on that and it will take you to that specific Twitter um, handle. It looks like that's, um, I'm not sure what that is, but, and then you can always exit out of that and it will pull it back up. And this one is updated um, throughout the day as well. So I think that is everything that I have to show you. If you guys have any particular questions, again, you can always reach out to us at um, sonarsales.freightwaves.com. Um, but I hope this was useful and thank you guys for your time.